Alright, hey guys, and welcome to the second episode of Player 2 Reviews, where I'm going to be covering a game that I actually missed when it first came out, uh, and it wasn't until years later that a friend of mine introduced it to me and I was finally able to get my hands on it, and that is Cybernator for the SNES. Let's take a look. Cybernator is a futuristic run-and-gun platformer game created by Konami, who, by this time, had already proven their skill in creating some legendary side-scrolling titles such as Contra and Castlevania. So when I heard that they had created another, I jumped at the opportunity to play it and was not disappointed. The story takes place in a bleak future filled with war over what little resources remain on Earth, as well as control for our moon. The main weapons for the two vying governments revolve around various forms of weapons of mass destruction and assault mech suits. Your main character, Jake, is a pilot of one of these mech suits who is given the task of destroying the opposing faction's most powerful assault mech. Your main objective spans over seven different missions, each with their own unique feel and sub-objectives. The story is quite typical for a futuristic mecha universe, but is rewarding enough to make you feel like the missions you are completing are all leading to your ultimate goal, and in turn, an epic last fight. Now, the gameplay is fairly standard Konami-like, so you know everything will be responsive and accurate. However, they did take some risks by adding a 6-axis aiming control, which allowed you to shoot consistently at any angle. While the freedom to shoot however you please has its upsides, it can be kind of clunky at times and a little difficult to get the hang of. When you do finally grasp it though, the game becomes even better and really allows you to enjoy the experience the way it's meant to be. Your mech, known as an assault suit, comes with a built-in ability to punch, as well as a machine gun known as the Vulcan. In addition to these two, you also find a missile weapon and a laser gun as well. All these abilities are able to be powered up by collecting the P icons that drop from enemies and can lead to some interesting effects such as bullets bouncing off of walls or simply increasing the size of your beam. Finding these new weapons is part of the fun of Cybernator, and finding which you like best makes the game more engrossing and provides some additional replay value as well. Along with your weapons is a built-in shield which allows you to block almost any enemy attack in the game. This addition alone will allow Cybernator to stand out and is important enough to actually showcase on the front cover of the box and cartridge. Now each level is played from a side-scrolling perspective, but how you play the actual mission varies from one to the other. The first mission has you platforming through to the end, whereas the second mission has you flying through the level Gradius style, till you reach the boss. It continues to throw in something new each level which will keep you interested right to the very end of the game. The music for Cybernator is fairly well composed and maintains the futuristic feel that the game is trying to get across. The music isn't all that memorable after turning the power off, but will certainly help immerse you when you are playing. The sound effects for the game I found to be a little bland, and the sound of text during dialogue can be kind of annoying. But overall, nothing terrible and certainly won't have you reaching for earplugs, or prevent you from finishing the game. The graphics and effects in Cybernator are certainly top-notch. Konami pulled out all the stops to ensure that every sprite and background were detailed perfectly. Every explosion and enemy destroyed rewards the player with an amazing effect that leaves you wanting more, which is exactly what you want from a run-and-gun shooter of this type. Overall, Cybernator is a decent side-scrolling run-and-gun that has kind of been overlooked. Decent graphics and constantly changing gameplay elements make this title a unique experience. If you are a fan of old school running guns, then I certainly recommend giving this a try. You can usually find it online for fairly cheap, and I believe it's also available for download on the Wii eShop as well, so there's really no excuse not to try it out. I just want to say thanks again everyone for watching, I like to do these reviews to hopefully bring some games to light that don't really get the love they deserve. So anyways, be sure to check back soon for some more gaming coverage, this has been a Player 2 Review, and we'll see you next time.